The corpse of the red-haired woman in the leather jacket sat hunched over the table in the abandoned studies. An urban explorer by the name of Keefe examined the body with a flashlight casting shadows across the back end of the bookcase. He was careful not to touch anything. Holy shit, he whispered. He worried that a loud sound might disturb the scene and... And what? He couldn't think of a reason, but something within him stirred. The dead body was uh, bad enough, but it was immobile. The blood looked like it had been dried for a long time. If she had been killed, and whoever did it was most likely long gone by now. There was a revolver on the table near her left hand. He wanted to check it and see if it had been fired, but when he looked at the head of the woman, there was no entry or exit wound. The head was in fact intact. Place his hand near her mouth for a minute. No breath coming out of it. The body did not move up and down peacefully as one would when asleep. And yet there was a blindfold around her eyes. Keith was struck by the overwhelming urge to remove it and see the stare hidden underneath. His mind absentmindedly touched the edge of the cloth. He shuddered and pulled back. No way. Cops will think I did it. He thought, flashing the beam of light underneath her arm, and saw a book underneath her head. There was a small glow coming from within it. Pen was still in the right hand of the woman. The glow flashed again within the book. Keith wanted them to remove it, but the woman's head rested on it. He'd have to move her. Is there a phone stuck in the pages of the book? He thought, as he heard it vibrate with each pulse of light. He grabbed the book's edge and waited. Sure enough, the vibration went came through. Somebody could be calling her. Somebody who missed her. Somebody who needed to know what happened. Keith reached underneath his neck with trembling fingers. He felt for a pulse. Nothing. He held her head up slightly. She was ice cold. He shivered. The book slid out easily from underneath her head. As he pulled her cheek off the table, he looked at the book. Did the pen move? He stared with delight. Maybe the whole body was, has been disturbed by now, so it only made sense the posture would be shift a little. He felt the book vibrate. He felt the book vibrate in hand. It fell on the floor with a loud thud that caused his heart to leap into his chest. He shot the flashlight around the room, taking in the floor the wooden door frames, the large archway and a soft beam of moonlit f falling through the thin basement window. The window's floors creaked underfoot as the beam falls across the body once more. Her head was turning the other way. It stared at him with blindfolded eyes. Keith shook his head. No, no, I was imagining things. He said out loud, You're dead, and that's it, that. He waited for a response. While the flashlight shone ab around her body, it did not move. Yeah, that's what I thought. He bent down to pick up the book and held it in his hand. He could not read it while the flashlight was pointed at the woman. So he, sh he shined it at the book in front of him. Still, he turned the his body towards the corpse. He felt safer that way. The book had words on on the most recent page, and they were still appearing. Keith stared in disbelief at the message forming in front of him. Hey, Sunset, are you there? What do you mean the spirits are chasing you? Please write back. Please. I know you must be okay, because the book is registering that it has been mo as an owner. Write back, please. Is this is this a new type of wireless computer tablet? Keith thought. She must have died recently. He looked for the prompt on the page to input 
the information. I need a pen. Sunset, that's her name. She had one. He shined the light upon Sunset's body. It was now on the floor at his feet. One hand stretched an inch towards his boot. Jesus fucking Christ! Keith screamed. As he staggered back, the book fell to the, out of his hand once more as it hit the ground next to the fallen body. He nearly lost his balance, but righted himself just in time. His breathing became rapid. He stared at the blindfolded form on the ground. Why didn't you make a sound? What the fuck? He bent down. Hey, are you alive? Tell me. You're okay. He hesitated but reached out and tapped on her shoulder, then immediately backed away five feet. She did not move. He tapped the body with his foot. Nothing. Come, oh, come on! He looked at her hand and saw both of them clutching tight. The pen was still in her right, in the right hand. He knelt down over it. Sorry, but I need this. He grabbed the pen. The grip was iron. He stepped on the hand as he tugged. There was a loud crack from underneath underneath his shoe as he gasped. Oh shit! He said the pen came free. I am so sorry. He released his boot and turned away, unable to look at the form of the woman whose hand he had just broken. He walked over to the book right next to her, picked it up, and stopped in the corner of the room. About 30 feet away from the body, he opened the last page and started to write. Hey, who is this? My name is Keith. I found... He stopped. Should he tell Sunset's friend that he found her body? He shined the light back to, at the table. The body was missing. He gasped and shone it closer to his feet. Sunset's corpse was three feet away. It looked as though it was mid crawl with back hunched up from off the ground and gnarled hands popping her up she stared at keith with blindfolded eyes oh my god he said the beam of light wavering as his hand shook can you hear me stop fucking around he panned the light atop the table at the gun then back at sunset in the three seconds he had moved the beam, she advanced two feet. She was now right at below him, popping up on her hand, staring at him, immobilized, behind a veil of cloth. He could not see her eyes, but he felt her stare. His heart seized up. His breath came out in quick gasps. He kept the light trained on the unmoving body on the floor as he starved around it while moving towards the gun. He placed the book on the table and picked up the gun. He opened the chamber. There were no bullets. He popped it back on the table with a useless clatter. Sunset still had not moved. <laughs> the book buzzed, nearly causing Keith's heart to jump. He picked it up and moved to the very edge of light beamed so the book could not block sunset from his view. Words began to appear. Keith, who are you? I'm Twilight. Where is sunset? She's the girl in the red hair. Is she okay? No, she's not fucking okay. She's very far from fucking okay. Keith yelled. Sunset remained idle. He looked at the door down the hall, wondered how far he had to go to get in to the door. Sunset was no longer his problem. He'd let the police deal with her. He had the clear how, how many rooms? He was in the basement, with the staircase leading past an archway and up into the first floor. There were other rooms around but his goal was to get out as quickly as possible. He kept his gaze on Sunset as he moved across the room, in his haste, from the slight dis of seconds. The beam left her position, when it fell upon her Sunset's head, had turned to his directions. Her mouth was opened, 
red ooze out and patted to the floor, breaking the silence. Keith yelped in surprise. He turned up the stairs and bolted upwards. Thirty steps later, he was on top. He grabbed the door and turned. Sunset was halfway up the stairs. Her mouth opened in a snarl, leaking bile and blood onto the path as she made in silence. The dripping, the only sound Keith heard. He slammed the door closed and set the latch on it. Fuck that, he said, though a breathless whisper he heard a loud slam on the other side as he jumped back. And nothing. He ran through the house, desperately searching for the exit. The open door after door, but found no room with a window or no, and no way out. He could have sworn the layout was completely different than when he en had entered. And he found something. A door unlike any other. Thick mosaic glass reached up along its side. It was too dim, thin to crawl through, but enough to see the light of cars passing by. Keith kicked the door. The firm construction resisted each hit. There was no dent. No sign of impact of any kind. HELP! He yelled. The loud bang issued from behind. Then, the sound of something scraping its way through the ventilation system. Oh no, he said. He shined his light around. He found a room on the, off to the side, closed the door, and looked around. There were no vents, no windows, and no other forms of entry. It was completely empty, with featureless brown walls, almost like he was underground. Keith kept his light trained on the door, and backed, as he backed up to the furthest end of the room, he pulled out the journal and wrote furiously. Twilight, sunset is dead. She is chasing me through the house. I don't know what to do. Help! Keith looked around. There was a closet around the, the corner from the room. The door he hadn't noticed at first. He ran over it, closed the shutters, and turned off his light. She couldn't get me here. She couldn't. She doesn't know I'm here. The door is locked. The door is locked. The book buzzed out again. The vibration was like a moaning creature calling out in the dark. Fuck. Keith whispered. He opened it, but could not read in the pitch black. He shined the light once more. There was nothing in the closet around him. He couldn't see the shutters. The room was still empty. He focused on the book. No. You have to be wrong. She can't be dead. She messaged me less than an hour ago. What do you mean she's chasing you? Keith looked up at the book. The blood around Sunset's body had been dry for a while. But was it her blood? Her body was cold. Her mouth bled when it opened. He crushed the bone in her hand, and she didn't move a muscle. What was she? He, he pulled out the pen and wrote furiously. The scratching of the point reminded him of fingernails on the wood. She was face down on the desk, blood around her. This book below her, I took the book. She moved when I wasn't looking at her. Now she's chasing me. She was cold. She was dead. He shined the light through the shutters. Still nothing. His heart jumped when he thought he heard movement. There was nothing. The closet with him. In fact, there was nothing in any room of the house he'd seen. He wrote quickly. This house is changing. There are no exits, no windows. I can't get out. Am I going to die, Twilight? I don't want to die. The door opened. Keith instructively turned off the, his lights. No, I locked it. He thought, though panicked breath 
Then he remembered his message. He had asked Twilight, Twilight a question. Soon she would respond. Soon the book would vibrate. Like a dying animal, it would cry out. And Sunset would know where he was. And like clockwork, the noise issued from the book. Keith suppressed the urge to cry. He opened and closed the book quickly so the buzzing would stop. He waited for the end, feeling his eyes water. He had come to, so close, but the room, but the door to the closet hadn't been opened. Did she know he, she, he was there? There was no uh, else to hide. Wait, she didn't make noise. When she moved, did that mean anything she touched was silent too? He never heard her footsteps. He never heard her crawling across the creaky wooden floor. He moved his hand where the shutters should be. It wasn't there. It was open. He didn't need to turn on the lights to know. She was staring right at him. He felt the hand close around his arm, felt its crushing grip around, moving towards his throat. He pushed around, and the unseen body fell away from him. He turned on the light and fell to the ground, with the iron grip clutching his arm. Sunset laid sprawled on the floor. She did not move. The bandages over her eyes fell, and she now stared into the ceiling. Keith felt tears falling across his face at the sight. Sunset had no eyes. Empty, dirty sockets stood where her eyes gazed, around where her gaze should have been, and in one of them something golden sh shined. Keith steeled himself and peered closer. It was a key, bloody and rusty. It sat neatly in the cervix of her left eye, should have been. With trembling hands, Keith reached down. He felt the red liquid pour around his fingers as he clenched the key in his grasp. He pulled it out, and an audible squishing of fluid, he stared at it. It looked like a home key. He moved to stand, but felt Sunset's hand still around his arm. He tried hitting it with a dis to dislodge it, but she was like a statue. He f saw the book on the floor next to him. He pulled it close. Another message was inside. My, my friend is dead? Keith waited and gasped the book. Keith waited and grasped the book. Please, say something, anything. More words appeared. Keith, I couldn't save her, but I'm going to save you. Listen, she's a wraith now. Don't let her out of your sight. She'll chase you forever. You have to give her what she wants, or you'll never be free of her. Keith wrote furiously in response. She's got me, Twilight. I have the li light on her, but... Her hand is stuck around mine. When the light goes out, I'm dead. What do can I give her? I don't have anything she wants. Keith looked at the book, then at the body of the woman he never knew. The book was the one thing she was holding when he found her. Found her. She only moved after he removed it. It was his fault. All of it. Since it might never have come after him, if it wasn't for the book, Keith continued his writing. I think she wants the book, Twilight, but what if I give it to her and it doesn't work? She tried to kill me once already. What do I do? He waited while he knelt over the body. He expected the flashlight to go out. He thought it would flicker, thought it would lose life on its own, leaving him to his fate. But it didn't. 
It stayed bright and sh shined over the unmoving body of the eyeless sunset. It meant he would not die because of circumstances. He would have to turn off the light himself. The book buzzed. Give, Give her, her the, the pen, pen. Keith. Place, Place it in it her hand. hand. Open the book in front of her. Move her in front of it. When the pen touches the page, then turn off the light. Good luck, Keith. If it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Keith looked down at the words. He couldn't believe that Twilight was asking him to do it. He would be vulnerable, and then he would be dead. But as lo long as the light was on her, Sunset wouldn't move. Couldn't move. She couldn't do anything. And if he didn't turn off the lights, the batteries would die eventually. And then, he would have no way of fending her off. He didn't. Sunset, he said. I don't know if you can hear me, but Twilight wants you to talk to her. He placed the book next to her and opened it to the most recent page. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm just so scared right now. He looked down at the body. He began to cry. I can't imagine what you must be going through. If you're still conscious, though, through all of this, he placed a pen in her hand and stared at her. He wondered about Sunset, wondered who she was and why she was so special to this Twilight, who was communicating through the book, wondering why her hair was red and with yellow streaks, or why she wore a leather jacket with the image of the sun on it. He imagined she must have been really special to this Twilight. I've never had to face death before, Keith said. I am so fucking terrified. Sunset, I can't see a way out of it, and I don't know why I think I'm why I think talking to you is going to change that, but if you want to kill me, please make it quick. His hand shivered around the flashlight. He broke down crying. The beam dropped across Sunset's chest, placing her face in the shadows. He found his free hand clutched. Sunset grasped around his arms. He felt it move. It was cold. So very cold. The grip did not loosen. The light face downwards around Sunset's midsection. She sat up. Keith felt his heart drop. He couldn't see her face, and he didn't want to. He knew the lifeless eyes, the lifeless eye sockets were there. Knew she was staring at his hopeless crying form. He refused to look her in the face. Her, aunt, her other hand dropped the pen and moved towards his neck. I'm sorry, Keith said, his voice cracking. I'm sorry I took what belonged to you. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. I'm sorry. Her hand clutched around his throat, but it didn't move. In the darkness shrouding her face, Keith felt a warm breath around her mouth shroud his fallen tears. His hand moved up around from his throat and stopped on his cheek. Sunset wiped away the falling tears and held the side of his face. Keith looked up. In the border between light and dark, he saw the vague outline of two green eyes staring back at him. They were soft. They were kind. With a soothed gaze of pity, they turned away from Keith and peered down at the open book. Sunsets picked up the book and began to write. After what seemed like an eternity, she stopped. The pen fell from her hand. Her grip loosened around Keith's arm, and she fell. The body moved no more. Keith pointed the flashlight at her. She was face down. The book was open in front of her. Keith read it. Twilight, I'm so I am so sorry. I meddled in things I shouldn't have. If you ever come here, don't follow my notes. I have been cursed by my pursuit of eternal life. I am so sorry that my actions have hurt you. 
and so many others. Please, I wanted to live alongside you, not realizing I should enjoy the time I already had. And now, I've wasted it. I'm sorry, Twilight. I loved you. Forgive me, and remember the good in me. Keith, I forgive you. Please, don't be afraid anymore. Keith stood outside the house and looked at the key in his hand. He locked the door behind him, leaving Sunset, the book, and the nightmares he stared at, the nightmares behind. He stared at the house and wondered if it was somehow connected to her. He didn't need to know about the side effects of her magic. He turned around and walked home. Two hours later, sunrise rose over an empty lot. It was odd to see such a large, wide open space in between so many houses. How could the home developers forgotten uh, to put a house here? A little girl walked across the grass. She stubbed her toe on something and saw a small book with a strange symbol on the cover. She picked it up and opened it.